welcome back to Glazing with Amico. This is Kara, and this is part two of Glazing with Smugs. So you can see I have my Frida Kahlo dinosaur plate. Again, this is three layers of SM11 white. Um, so that's satin matte white. That's a cone five um, applied to the plate, and then I am applying the smugs directly on top of the raw glaze. So, um, as I said before, I put a little clean water on the colors I'm going to be using to kind of soften them up. And I'll put a little bit more. Some of these look like they need a little more. And I have my test tile here that shows all the colors. So for example, this darker green is right there. The lighter green background is here. That's what this will this background will look like. And I'm going to bring a little bit more of the chartreuse in as well for highlights. So as I was saying in the first half, um, velvet underglazes and um, uh, the LUG underglazes work really well for uh, opaque color and I like to think of them as if you if you're familiar with different kinds of paints I like to think of the the LUGs and the velvets as being like like a gouache kind of paint they work uh, best when they're a little bit on the on the thick side, they're more opaque. The smugs are more like a regular watercolor. So, and like a watercolor, you can kind of lift some of that color as you go by bringing some water back into it. So again, I start with the lightest colors and work my way up towards the, the darker colors. So I'm going to work a little bit more on the background. And as I was saying, this is sort of a Frida Gorgosaurus. giving her a bright, colorful teal background. And yes, these brush marks will show when it's fired. It will look more or less the way it does right now. spattered a little bit. Since the smugs have our really super saturated color, you can some very dark areas, but you can also see all of those brush marks. With just one coat. So instead of applying more coats to make it more opaque, I recommend just letting the water sit a little bit longer on the pan so that you soak up more underglaze and then just applying just like this just one coat
that's a really, really strong blue background. And that color is right here. That's going to be pretty dark. So I can let that dry and then I can use a little more water to lighten it up. Just like a watercolor. For her eye, the visible eye, I'm going to give her blue eyes, not for any particular reason. I'll let that dry before I put a little bit more in there. get back into some of the background color. So, you can put a lot of depth into these, or you can put a little. You can also, another thing, going over the top of satin mats like this, or using it as an underglaze, you can also add in more color and texture with underglaze pencils and chalks. And the chalks can actually be applied and then mixed a little bit with um, with a little bit of water, almost like a, a watercolor pencil effect. So you can kind of get more depth. Or different effects, if, if that's what you're going for. Although if you're using chalks and pencils, you have to be very careful when going on top of a glaze so that you don't kind of rub the glaze off, right? A little bit of purple in here. See why I like these chisel brushes. I can get everything from a wash down to very fine lines. So uh, I did have the question about using a, uh, like a glossy glaze or a clear glaze. As I said, I've I've used this with a satin matte clear, and I have tried a little bit with some of the glossy glazes like HF9, applying it on top. But you have to be careful. The glaze has can't be over-fired 
at all um, because if the glaze runs you lose all of your your fine lines it all kind of mushes together so I, I like to use um, the mats because they they stay in place now the snow holds holds still it's quite a stiff glaze for being a gloss but I when I've tried it it did shift a little bit so it did the lines didn't stay as crisp as what I would prefer so that's why I, I, I like going with the satin mats also I kind of like how they look more like paper you know, being matte and all. Uh, I think that the eye is now dry enough where I can put a little more depth in it. Now you can mix these just like a watercolor. So if I want a color that's halfway between one and another, just like mixing a, a watercolor paint, So more or less, just play with them. They're really fun. And if you like doing things that are very painterly, you're gonna love using the smugs. So again, questions, you can apply these as an underglaze and apply a clear glaze on top, or you can apply them on top of the glaze, being sure that your colors are gonna come out the way you want them to. And um, that is my demo of using the satin mats over a matte glaze, just like that. And uh, if you have questions, drop them in the comments, and I'll be happy to answer them offline. Um, thanks for joining me. And next week, I think that we're going to be uh, talking about texturizer the TH1 High Fire Texturizer. So, uh, thanks for joining me. I'll see you next week.